to do any type of recap. Yes, I'm gonna do a recap. Thank you. For okay. Me. Okay. I don't know who's who's left here. This is where it really gets to the to the beef. Uh, that is, if you're non-vegetarian, um, I don't know what the vegetarian expression is for that. Um, let me refresh your. Uh, I'm going to give you some more sushi out there to, to eat before we get started. Okay, so everybody's got some fresh plate of sushi. Um, what we what we started out in the very first session is we laid a foundation for seeing numbers as they really appear. And we call that subquan, and we learned that shape, place shape, being squares, cubes, segs, sega squared, is very fundamental. In this next session, we took that fundamental and we expanded it so that you could see the equation, the meta pattern. And it gave us a nice foundation for expressing algebraic polynomials. But we have a problem in going beyond what physically fits in containers. I could create containers that hold up to 32 things, and I've got those on my drawing board. And I, I really want to, to explore if kids can see um, research. My preliminary research says they can, but that's so far beyond the crowd that's here, the, the ones that have already reached adult. So I don't know what to do about that. Um, but I want to say, how, how do we see this data? And uh, let me move this sheet out of the way. I, I, we'll come back to this big sheet. But I'm going to move it out of the way right now. And I want to return to the smaller sheets. So here we have four smaller sheets. I'm going to turn that one sheet around so it doesn't. Let me turn it around. And there, I'll provide a nice backdrop for us. Okay. Can everybody see these sheets or do I need to pull them down? So focus on the four sheets up above. What I'm going to show you is a very fundamental way um, of seeing algebraic equations just from looking at the data. Let me see if everybody can even hear me first. Can we type a Y in the chat? If I have somebody listening to me, everybody's listening, even the people that I'm working with. Give me a why if you <laughs> if you hear me. And I don't have that many people here. Okay, I figured this last one would burn some people out, but three sessions that's kind of hard. Okay, thank you, thank you guys for sticking around, and thank you for responding. Okay. I have to turn around so I can see the board myself. How many of you are familiar with the concept of differences? Differences. Okay, and differences you'll see explored, and, and typically, and in, in all that I've seen, is they use differences to help you determine the order, or in our terminology, the place shape the biggest place shape of the pattern of numbers you're looking at. So let, let's go down here and let me put up some examples because examples are much easier. And uh, 
And let me say, whoops, hold on. Let me reset all my base sheets here. I'm using a device called the Squid. If you hadn't heard us already talking about that. And the Squid enables us to control multiple base sheets and it also lets us talk. And I'm going to turn on chat. Chat's going to be very important for you to see the, the ordered pairs of data that I'm talking about. And it lets us see more than just the one. So here is a here's a set of data. And you see the uh, nine ordered pairs that I put in of 2 through 10. If you're a math teacher, you know you could graph this on a graph paper. And you would get a nice horizontal line. And it'd be up at y equals 6. And now I want to go into the differences. If we take the differences of these numbers, of these ordered pairs, 6 minus 6 is 0, 6 minus 6 is 0, 6 minus 6 is 0. We see that they all end up being 0. That's the difference. When the differences are 0, that means that you have reached the shape, or they used to call it the place value and decimal system. You, you've reached the order of the exponent. In this case, it was our very first one, so it's a zeroth ordered, which means we have a constant. And here the constant is y equals 6. So by taking the differences, we can see this. Now that one's a simple one, and nobody really needed to take the difference to determine that equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show you how the subquan helps you understand how to get to the differences, and then the differences help you get to calculus, uh, at least on the derivative side. So let's take a different one. I'm going to take another real simple example here. Now this is a seg equation. It's got the subquan 1, 0. We can see that in all four base sheets. And if we take the differences, what we're looking for is we're trying to look at the data. We're trying to be able to just train our eyes to look at the data and see the meta pattern. And if I look at the data, I look at the differences, and I see the difference between 4 and 3 is 1. The difference between 5 and 4 is 1. In fact, the differences are all 1. That tells me that I have a first-order equation, and it also gives me the coefficient. And this is what's missing in most differences. It gives you the coefficient. Let's see if that's really true. Let me add a few more. Segs. So I added a few more segs. If we look at the data in the, in the chat again, now we see that the difference is what? 12 minus 9 is 3. 15 minus 12 is 3. 18 minus 15 is 3. So it looks like the difference is 3. And lo and behold, if we look at the meta pattern, we see that 3. So it seems that we can now, just with linear equations, just to show you how fast we got to where we are, let me put up another set of, of numbers, and I want somebody to tell me what they, what they see the difference being. Look just at the data. Keep your eyes off the board, please. Are you ready? Here it comes in the chat. Just look at the chat, type it in when you tell me what the difference is. Yeah, it's pretty easy to see, isn't it? And now we're going to take one step further. I want you to take those six sixes, or those sixes, whatever they are. So look back at your data table. And let's say you are looking at the ordered pair 6, 36. 
if we take those six sixes away, we end up with zero. If we take the six sevens away, which is 42, we take those away, we end up with zero. We take the nine sixes, which is 54, away from 54, we end up with zero. So first thing we did was we took the differences and that gave us our coefficient and it also told us the order of the equation. In this case, the first difference was six. That means we're a first ordered equation. And after we removed it, we saw nothing was left. And if we look at the subquad, we actually see six, zero. And that's exactly what the data saw. So now let's do another one. I think we got a fast group. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it up a little here. And and I want you first to tell me the differences. Just look at the data. I'm trying to wean you off of the sheets, off the subquad. What's the difference? Type in the difference as soon as you have the first difference. Okay, it jumps out. Very simple for people to see. Now remove that difference of x's from the data. So if you're in the order pair 731, remove four sevens and see what you what what do you end up with if you remove four eights you end up with the same number if you remove four nines you end up with the same number what is that number that you end up with when you look at your your data table and you remove them yeah it doesn't make a difference what which one it is you either remove four tens from 43 you end up with three now let's look up at the sheets and we see the four and the three. That's what subquanting was doing for us. It was helping us ascertain those differences at each place. Now, are there, let me, I don't know how many people are in there. So I, I don't know how many Y's to expect. Let me look around the audience, see how many people I have. Uh, Okay, can I get a Y from each of you just so I know who's interacting with me? I just want to see how many Ys I get of interaction. That way it just lets me predict kind of how many I'm waiting for. Okay, I see five, five Ys, so there's some people that aren't. Sub one, I see 10 people. Okay, so the 10 people out there I'm getting interaction from, six of you, good. Okay, did everybody understand how you can look at just the, the data, the two-digit data, and you can tell me the linear equation? I can put in another one. Do one more. It's easy to look at the subquan, but let's say you're doing experimental data. You're measuring voltage and resistance. Uh, you're looking at speed and velocity. All of these are linear equations. They're all, uh, we call them seg equations. These are all seg equations. And so, what's the difference? And then what's left over? That gives you your two subquan numbers, and we already know from the last class that we can put those two subquan numbers into an expression, into an equation. So just looking at the data, we look at the differences, we remove the differences, that gives us our second number in the subquan. So does somebody want to 